Very good evening, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, Latest Macroeconomic and Geopolitical Developments and Their Impact to Markets. I'm Ming Hui from Flip Futures, and tonight's session is held in collaboration with Trading Central. To kick things off, we have Ms. Dominica, who will be sharing with us a short introduction to Trading Central. After which, we will hear from Trading Central Deputy Head of Research, Mr. Ming Lam, who will be sharing how several major macroeconomic and geopolitical events will impact the markets and by popular demand. He will also be discussing some key Hong Kong, US and Singapore shares CFDs. Before I pass this on to the speakers, please be reminded that if you have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, you can drop them into the questions box and we will answer them during the live Q&A session towards the end. And now over to you, Dominica. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Dominika Lach. I'm a um, client success manager from Trading Central. Uh, I believe many of you know my voice already from before. Um, can you see my screen or not yet? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Uh, is it yes, visible it's now? now? Yep. Okay. So. Today I'm unusually uh, starting from uh, Philip Futures website because I wanted to show you where you can find um, actually Trading Central um, application that you can uh, download and um, install. Uh, so it's uh, Trading Central tools will be visible on um, your MT5 Philip Future platform. So uh, once you are on Philip Future's website, you just need to go to the platforms, then you go to the Philip MetaTrader 5 suit. Once you are here, you scroll down and here you get our plugin. So you just need to download Trading Central indicators from here. Uh, you're going to have like a quick uh, setup where you need to download the plugin and then once you open the Philip Future MT5 platform you will get our plugin um, which appears as uh, indicators and expert advisors. So now I'm going to just show you the, um, the indicators. So under Trading Central you can have a um, couple of indicators. Most popular one is the analyst views. Uh, you just need to drag and drop it on the chart Click OK, of course, and uh, you will see our indicator. So the indicator is very useful uh, if you are planning to open the position on the particular asset. It shows you the support and resistance lines, a pivot point in blue, um, and trading central preference. So it might be rise or decline, uh, either in green or in red. Uh, and below, uh, in the yellow section, you have the whole explanation um, on the, our preference, alternative scenario, the comment with some technical um, bytes as well. Um, so this is quite useful if you are planning to place a trade and put, for example, stop loss and take profit. Uh, now, there are a couple of more tools available as well. Uh, under the expert advisor section. So, uh, for example, you are thinking about trading um, a Forex in this case. Um, you can go to the expert advisors trading central section, double click. Um, sorry. And the pop up window should appear um, this way. So, it's a uh, a pop-up window, a small one, with two tools, Forex Feature Ideas and TC Market Bus. Um, the first one that appear is the Forex Feature Ideas. Um, here, actually, uh, it's quite useful if you are looking for ideas what to trade. Um, this particular tool is uh, focused only on, on Forex, um, on Forex pairs. Uh, so here you have a custom settings. You can adjust to your needs, for example, the bar sizes, holding time frame, and some technical events. When it's done, the algorithm is searching for the most um, appropriate 10 ideas. Some are bullish, some are bearish. And for example, you find the GBP card uh, interesting. 
so you can get some uh, more information about the technical events that were found on this particular um, forex pair. Um, you have also some educational uh, bits here. And for example, you are interested to trade uh, this um, forex pair, so maybe you can also double check then with the indicator what it says. So that one was bullish. Here, our analysts also say that um, this uh, pair is uh, on a rise. So you have like a double confirmation that uh, this is uh, actually quite a good opportunity for you to place a trade. Um, we have another tool uh, available in the expert advisor section, which is called TC Market Buzz. Uh, I was just searching here for also some information about the um, GBP uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, so you get the news feed. Uh, there is an, a news article from two days ago about this particular Forex pair. So you can also read more about it. However, um, in case of uh, Market Buzz, I would say this is more um, more useful for like general um, information and news uh, for for you, and of course for uh, for stocks uh, trading it would be much much uh, more interesting for you as well. So for example, if you are searching for some info about um, basically what's buzzing now in the market, what are the most buzzing stocks, um, you get this uh, this bubble um, interface. You can see that the bigger the bubble, the more buzz, of course, about the specific um, specific stock. Um, as always, for example, Apple is one of the most buzzing um, stocks. Then if you click through, you will get to this dashboard where you have a um, couple of sections, for example, the news volume, the split between social media and um, uh, and the uh, news articles, uh, you get the orientation if it's positive, negative, and neutral. Um, the most discussed topics. Uh, so now the, the number one topic is the ownership. Um, then you get the news history um, chart, little chart that can be also you know changed by um, the time frame. And uh, yeah, it's takes uh, just a second to load and on the right uh, hand section you get uh, the news feed so you get all the news here related to to apple so this is very very useful if you are you know just uh, searching for some interesting news searching what's going on in the market and um, our tool is actually uh, web harvesting all the news um, regarding the uh, specific uh, stocks or assets and uh, brings you like the overview uh, in a nice, uh, nicely uh, interfaced um, way. So you don't have to do all the research by yourself. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. In case you have any questions, I believe you can contact your Philip Future um, account manager and they will help you to um, get the, uh, access to the tools of Trading Central. And now I'm just uh, passing the microphone to my colleague Ming and he will uh, continue with the interesting subject for you. Okay, so the, um, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, friends of Philip Futures. Uh, I'm Ming Lam from Trading Central, and uh, once about once per month uh, we meet here, and I look forward to this event every month so that I can share with you what I have uh, seen in the market. Okay, so uh, now today, as usual. Uh, I will not take you a lot of time. I have about 40 slides, PowerPoint slides, to go ahead. Uh, it will spend, uh, uh, it will cost you about uh, 30 to 35 minutes. My purpose here is to, um, if, is to uh, give you those major substantial stories about uh, geopolitical, about uh, uh, macroeconomic, situation that you may have missed it for the past month 
Okay, so I will use all along the way. I will use some charts to to talk about some interesting stocks with uh, with uh, uh, very encouraging setup, which you will be interested i'm sure so uh, the charts i'm use uh, the stores i'm talking about today uh they most of them have corresponding um corresponding cfds in fit futures which you can easily locate on fit futures website okay so uh, let's go ahead so what is in your mind uh, in, in this few sessions of, of trading, is it this one? China Evergrande, I'm sure, I'm sure, right? But uh, is it your focus also? Let's talk about it later. But first of all, we go to US first because it is the biggest market we are trading. So it is uh, just out, this news is just out, uh, well, uh, it's fresh this morning, okay? Fred, in the Fed latest policy uh, meeting, they decide to keep the key interest rate at near, set, near zero level. Okay, at the same time, um, the market focus was on whether the Fed will, will, cut, will cut the bond purchase every month. You know, every month, the Federal Reserve, it buys it buys 120 billion US dollar worth of um, treasury, treasury bonds and uh, mortgage backed as, uh, securities. Now they are, they are talking about a moderation. It means they will cut, they will cut back, they will scale back the buying now. But uh, they only say that it will happen soon. Okay. And uh, they have not put out a concrete schedule or scale, how much they are going to cut, mm, unknown, okay? And then after the meeting, uh, Jerome, uh, Jerome Powell, Powell uh, Fed Chair, he came out and said that, oh, maybe the cutting will be concluded in the middle of next year, 2022, okay? But um, still, we don't know how much they are going to cut and when exactly they are going to cut. Why I, I'm talking about this point? Look at this. Now, this is, uh, well, this is not US dollar supply. This is uh, US uh, long farm payroll, okay? Uh, the latest one in August, they add 235,000 long farm payrolls in August. Well, way below, way below, uh, the expected expected was 733,000, way below. So this is the job market in the U.S. And in fact, when you look at the U.S. 10-year uh, U.S. Treasury yield, we are not seeing a, a very aggressive rise in the yield. What this number, 10-year Treasury yield, is very important uh, for, for us financial people. Why? It, somehow, this number will show you what the market foresee, how the market foresees growth coming forward. Now you see the yield is 1.3, only 1.3, okay? And um, it means the market is not expecting big growth going forward, okay? So, this com it comes back to the question I asked when the Fed will cut the bond purchase or how much they will cut the bond purchase. You know what? For the remaining months of the year, if the job numbers, the long farm payroll, and also um, uh, uh, other economic data, uh, retail sales, consumer price, they, if they saw some kind of weakness going forward, well, we are still in a pandemic, right? Coronavirus pandemic. If in the coming months, we are seeing weakening of those data, I'm sure the Fed will say, oh, come on. Well, we, we have to support the economy and um, no, no tapering. We are not scaring back uh, the bond purchase, okay? 
or in some cases maybe they will say oh we will buy some more we don't know okay it is very flexible and uh, let's see so now at the same time uh, these slides i sold in one or two webinars before we have our uh, kindness uh, I, I i have lost i have lost count of how many stimulus package the u.s government has pushed forward well in trump back in trump administration uh they pushed uh, several already when the pandem pandemic uh uh, uh started back in 2020 they already pushed out several stimulus plans of course they they they, they hand out cash okay hand out cash for families for individuals for those who has uh who has uh, lost their jobs okay i remember still uh when biden just uh just got in the position of president, he signed off a 1.9 trillion relief package. And what now? Already in the, in the several weeks ago, he, he has already signed off 1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Okay, it, we, call it, we call this uh, the physical infrastructure bill, 1.2 trillion US dollar. It includes uh, roads, bridges, power grid, broadband, airports, etc, etc. And uh, let me tell you, this is not the end. This is not the end. Now, currently, the Congress, Congress is debating, and I, I'm quite sure they will pass, they will pass this 3.5 trillion, 3.5 trillion. They also call this uh an infrastructure bill okay but uh, now this time it include climate change uh uh, help, uh child care and uh well all these all these interesting things they call it human infrastructure bill very interesting very interesting you see when people when those politicians spend your money they will create a lot a lot of uh uh, uh, names, title, plan. This is called uh, human infrastructure plan. Okay, 3.5 trillion. And I'm quite sure, and I'm quite sure, this is not the last one. Okay, when the economy, economic data, so some more weakness going forward, some more bills, some more money will be spent. I'm quite sure. Oh, this one is the US dollar supply. Um, uh, yeah, this one I showed you last time. Uh, this is the uh, Federal Reserve uh, M2 money supply. It is uh, they are not they are not publishing this anymore. This is uh, last year's data. Look at this. Last year, only one year, 2020, they print 30 percent more of money just last year. So this year. Do you think the money supply will be up or down? You should not ask, should be up, all right? So now talk about the uh, US stock market. Yes, uh, uh, I, I think uh, we when we look at the charts, now this is, a, uh, this is a, maybe some of you may not know that, this is a candle and stick uh, uh, chart. It is a one day chart or we call it a daily chart, okay? One bar, represent the trading of one day. We call it daily chart, okay? Going forward, all of my um, charts that I'm going to show you today are daily charts, okay? So this is, um, this is we call it a market breadth indicator. How to, how to, how to explain it? This is uh, uh, the number, the percentage of SP500 stocks that are above the 20 day moving average well in technical analysis or in analysis uh when we studying stock the this number 20 day moving average is a key okay whenever the stock well i can say most a trader most trader will be bullish the the um the first criteria of their being bullish on a stock is that this stock 
should be the price of the stock should be above the 20 day moving average. Okay, now we have only 66% of the SP500 stocks that are above the 20 day moving average. We can see the market momentum is somehow uh, uh, diminishing, reducing, okay, dropping. But uh, I can say that this is a good thing. Let's go forward and, and have a look. So now, this is the uh, S&P 500 index daily chart again. So uh, it, well, it, not long ago, not long ago, maybe at the start of this month, it make a, a record high, okay, above 4,500, 4, or we can say 4,500, okay? And then now it has reversing to the downside and has broken below a rising trend now, a rising trend nine. So we have to turn it down a bit at the moment. And uh, you see, it is uh, from the record high to the uh, recent low, there is a reduction of in the S&P 500 index, 5.3%. Um, I can say this is a healthy correction within a bull market, okay? Although on the daily chart, we have to turn it down, uh, but uh, we have to mine the key resistance here, the blue line, the blue horizontal line, key resistance here, we set it at 4,480, okay? Whenever S&P 500 is trading below this mark, uh, we, we say, well, it has a chance of going lower, but above this line, we will turn our uh, wheel to bullish. Meanwhile, we say the 4,300 mark is the, uh, is the support, okay? Is the immediate support we can have, okay? Now, 5.3% correction, we can just call it a correction, all right? Now, how about tech stock, technology stock? This is NASDAQ 100 index. It's about the same case, it's about the same case. The rising trend line has been broken. Okay, so we have to turn, turn to be bearish at the moment. And key resistance at 15,450. Okay, immediate support is at 14,820. So, how, how, dev, how deep is the co correction this time? 5.6%. Okay, you know what? In a, in a normal uh, in a normal bull market, a pullback, a consolidation, or we can say a correction of about 8% is, is okay, it's normal. Now this time, uh, up to now, we are seeing a 5.6 correction in test stocks, okay? Uh, I can say not a big deal, not a big deal for the moment, all right? So now, for the following, uh, five to six uh, stocks, I will talk about uh, some US stocks that are coming with very quite good teleco setup, okay? But warning, uh, I have some warning, just uh, as I did uh, every time, we cannot, we cannot uh, just trade on teleco analysis, TA. Okay, teleco analysis is um, in fact, Simply, it is a study of charts, okay, and patterns and indicators, moving average, and see if uh, we can we can uh, go to some conclusion to see if we should hold a bullish looking up price or bearish looking down price at the moment. But but listen, uh, we cannot just use TA to decide how we trade, okay. As I will show you, there are some other factors, the fundamental factors, just like the company's fundamental, and uh, well, the macroeconomic situation, and also the geopolitical situation. Okay, but um, for the setup part, for the setup part, I'm showing you technical analysis. Okay, I I I hope you can take some reference from it, but not trade it only uh, on TA. Okay. Now, 
this is my uh, if you have been uh following following my webinars you should know that this is this has been my uh, favorite stocks okay so after a, uh, a period well a long period half year consolidation we see that tesla the ev ele electric vehicle maker is uh, riding on a rising trend line and the share price are holding up is the share price is holding up very well despite the recent downturn in the market well we see uh, you see we have a five percent cor uh, correction uh, consolidation in the stock market s p 500 and uh, last year 100 index okay but tesla you see going up the trend are so is so well you see the 20 day moving average the, the lead to uh red nine here and the 50 day moving average the blue nine here okay this is relative strength index about 50 okay not bad not bad and um follow this follow these dogs it is not just as i told before it is not just an ev company it is engaged in AI, artificial intelligence, robotics, you know, and you know what? Maybe you have missed this one, energy storage, okay? And uh, this one could be huge. Well, um, have you heard about the uh, ARK investment, Kathy Wood? She said that this store could go up to 3,000, okay? Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> when, we, when now I'm looking at the daily chart i can see 830 is my target okay next one microsoft microsoft it uh to me it is this stock uh is quite um is quite impressive it has been holding up quite well uh, uh also uh during the co consolidating period of the stock market you see okay it is now up around still around the 20 day moving average but um you know what there is some sign that i want you to take a look here this is uh the relative string index is trending down a little bit and uh we call this a uh, bearish divergence that means the price is trending up stock price is trending up but rsi is trending a little bit down we call this a bearish divergence so you have to take this into consideration and that the uh this is uh the stock price is holding up well but we have some technical technical uh identification that not very good okay you have to you have to trade, you have to uh, balance, you have to think about all those factors when you make the trade, okay? And also, uh, this bull nine, for me, is very important. We keep this, for example, it is a bullish trade, we are bullish on this stock. However, if the stock breaks below this uh, key support, 287, we will turn we will cut loss okay we will cut loss and we will turn our wheel to bearish and mean, meanwhile it is holding up quite well at around 300 dollar okay so next one we have um, mcdonald's okay uh how however the economy is impacted by 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 the pandemic and uh, people just like just love mcdonald's food mcdonald's food right and um, look at this it has just broken out from a consolidated period here this triangle and it's well it keep trading above the 20 day moving average and the 50 day moving average and it's breaching the upper bollinger band there are two bollinger bands here okay one is above this one and one is below they call it lower bollinger band and upper bollinger bands Okay, now um, uh, McDonald's is now trading around, the, keep trading, I can say keep trading, keep striking the upper Bollinger Band. Uh, it means it has, uh, 
it is showing upward momentum at the moment at the moment okay previous high 247 uh, I think it will break 247 and above 247 253 okay this is uh, how how we use technical analysis to to uh, to position our trade I can say okay so McDonald is having a good setup also Gilead Science, it is a bio biotechnology stock. Okay, let's see what pattern it has got. Now, in fact, we are seeing it uh, posing uh, for the past several months. It is posing an uptrend. And then now, again, it consolidating a bit. But uh, we are seeing if it will break about this. Well, we call this a channel okay bearish channel and uh it let's see if we will break about this channel if it does it will revisit previous high 73.3 and then the next upside target should be 74.5 hey this one i want you to look at another one uh another uh parameter have you heard about macd matt d they they call it matt d it is just like the RSI, MACD and RSI are momentum indicators. Okay, have a look. When we see this uh, MACD is uh, this histogram, I like to uh, I like to check the histogram. It's uh, about to rise above zero. It is a good sign. Whenever we see this. The red, the red means it's come, uh, is uh, coming down, but the pink is showing that it, it is showing improvement in the momentum, upward momentum. So just keep, if you're interested in this stock, have a look at this uh, MACD to see if it will break above the zero line and mark some green, just like this one, green on the top, and that will and that will tell you a good story a good prospect for the stock okay give it sense not bad american express let's see what i have spot here a downtrend and uh and the, and the share price is performing quite well after locating locating a base here okay 156 something okay and uh, it has broken above a decaying trend line, and at the same time, just like the uh, the Gilead signs uh, uh, we just talked about a second ago, we are seeing some good sign in the MACD. Okay, you see those are negative, uh, I call it negative hills. Okay, are uh, getting smaller, and the positive, the green one, are getting bigger. And this is a good setup, a good, we call it good momentum, okay, for the stock. So you can you can have a look at this one. American Express, AXP, US, okay. And uh, this one, Lavidia. Well, um, I got, I hesitate about this stock. Uh, uh, one or two sessions ago, when uh, we see a sell, we saw a sell off in the US stock market, and. Uh, it, but uh, since then, this stock has done quite well because it keep its uh, look at this. It keep is a key support here, 208, 208. Okay, and um, well, uh, the overhead resistance at 230, it is a record high. Okay, a record high. That is this stock, Lavidia a very uh well i i can say uh this is the number one semiconductor semiconductor stock in the us okay uh, has is just uh, consolidating some gains after reaching a record high okay and uh i set i set the key support and 208 and uh it did not it has not crossed below it so that's why i keep a bullish wheel on this stock and also you see the MACD is turning pink and there there is a prospect that it will 
if the momentum will turn it up again. Okay, you know what? In the test stop uh, sector, well, um, some some subset of tech stocks are very outstanding within this year. One of these outstanding tech stock sector is the semiconductor sector. Okay, um, this stock, Lavidia, has been the leading, the leading one. So, have a look. And the next one, Broadcom, AVGO, you know what? It is also a semiconductor stock. It is a semiconductor producer. What pattern I have spot? It has coming come out from a long a long term consolidating period, starting which start at the start of the year. Now it is coming out. And also, just like Lavidia. It is keeping its uh, key support quite well, 488. And that's why I like Lavidia. I'm bullish on this stock at the moment. Okay, so two semiconductor stocks that you can consider. All right, have a look. So uh, now we turn our focus from US, from the US, back to China and Hong Kong stocks. Okay, so uh, all those ladies and gentlemen and friends who have followed my webinars know that I uh, I focus, I always focus on one, uh, one parameter, market parameter, which I treasure, I, I uh, laid a very heavy emphasis on, is the US-China relationship. And uh, for the, well, for the past uh, one or two years, particularly when, when Mr. Donald Trump was president, uh, we saw very bad relation between the two superpowers. Okay, do you agree? And um, after, after Mr. Joe Biden be, uh, became president, okay, we, we, uh, we hoped, we, we uh, expect there will be some improvement uh, between the two countries. Okay, now uh, last month we see that uh, the U.S. had a very interesting drama in the with in the with uh, withdrawal of people, U.S. troops and other peoples from Afghanistan. Okay, very funny story. I, I, I don't want to give uh, further details, but uh, it's just funny. And that time, this news just caught my eyes. Uh, Secretary, State Secretary, U.S. State Secretary Blinken called with, uh, with a foreign minister, Chinese foreign minister, and it gave me some optimism. Hey, they are cooperating on some issue, okay? And uh, I, I I turned to be quite uh, optimistic at that moment. And uh, the next one, this one, also uh, encouraged me, okay? The presidents of the US and China are, are, are spending some time, okay? One hour or so on the phone, talking to each other, discussing things, okay? Wow, wow, I was... Uh, I was happy in fact, I see mm, something good and uh, the, the tensions between the two countries should be, well, should be reducing, okay? They are shaking hands again, right? More friendly now, okay? And then uh, maybe I'm too naive, naive uh, in the politics. That's why I'm not, a very, I'm not a politician. You see what? And not long after that, we see this one. You, the UK, the US, and Australia are joining up together. And for what? They are the US, in fact, simply the US is helping Australia to upgrade their nuclear submarines. Okay? So it is a quick drama. Uh, you, the Australian government is abandoning, uh, abandoning the contract with France, 
Okay, even though they have to make compensation of billions of dollars. Okay, but they are abandoning the uh, submarine contract from France, and they are they are acquiring submarine nuclear submarine from the U.S. In fact, in fact, they are the Australian government is upgrading is upgrading their submarines. Okay. And you know what? Who is the main character? Well, maybe you 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 may have uh, missed one character, main character in this drama. Who is it? Yes, you're right. China. Okay. Why? Why you? Why the U.S. is upgrading Australia's uh, submarines against China? Uh, well, uh, I can say they are in preparation for the beefing up for the strengthening of the China, China's military, uh, well, in the region. You understand? So it seems uh, on the surface, uh, well, US, China, they are, they are calling on each other, uh, making phone call. But at the same time, the US is doing something in preparation. OK, OK. And next one, uh, I, I'm very, I'm very sensitive to, uh, uh, quite frankly, I'm very sensitive to SEC news. Okay, we have, we we know that the SEC have been has been quite, uh, has been quite a critical, I can say, on Chinese firm, and of course on those Chinese firm listed in the US. I, well, um, I I just. Um, Maybe you don't know, you don't know that um, the Chinese stocks listed in the U.S. We call it uh, ADR, American Deposit Receipt. Well, when the Chinese firms list the ADR uh, on Nasdaq on on NYSE, you know what? They don't have to undergo. Before I can, I'm talking the case before the the Chinese firm did not have to go through all those accounting uh checking uh, you know they don't have to they didn't have to open their books you know what this is a quite quite um quite strange to me but it is true but now now it is not the case the SEC say uh you have to open your books accounting you have to open your account for audit okay otherwise otherwise we will prohibit the trading of your stocks in the US. And of course, they list you. Well, have you seen that? And and um, apart from this accounting requirement, we have seen the government, the US government is quite critical on Chinese company listed in the US. Well, three uh, US telecom major company, Telecom China, China Telecom, China Mobile, and Unicom, China Unicom, have been delisted from the U.S. market. Can you record it? You still remember that, right? So uh, it seems uh, the U.S. authorities um, are getting more strict on Chinese firms. Okay, not a good sign. And also this one, uh, they warns U.S. investors of the certain risk from Chinese business entity, okay. So you see, if you if I tell you, uh, well, U.S. China relationships uh, is improving, at some extent, yes, but at some extent, no, okay. So that's why I am focusing always on the relationship between these two countries. So um, this is the black one, and. Uh, Let's see how the China and Hong Kong markets are doing these days. This is a CSI 300 index, not good. You see, we have a double, we have we have a declining trend line, and then we have double well, this uh, key resistance. Second, two times, two times, this CSI 300 index cannot break about. Okay, you see, bearish, bearish at the moment. How about 
Hong Kong Hang Seng Index, which you will be, uh, you well, I think most of you are trading in this market, right? How about that? We see consolidating period, not up, but down. Also, this key resistance, 26,500 around, is capping any upward rebound, okay? No case. Now, the Hong Kong HSI, Hansen Index is trading along, is tracing the lower Bollinger Band. Remember, this uh, is lower Bollinger Band. This is a soul of weakness, weakness, very weak. Okay, we expect it to cross below to 22,000. Okay. Now, this is the stock market as a whole. And then, remember, Last time when we, uh, the last webinar, we talked about the tax sector, how the Chinese government, how the Chinese government changed or uh, very uh, uh, regulations and giving more stricter regulation on those big tech name and uh, the big tech, big tech stocks just tumble here. And after the tumble, we have seen a rebound, but those rebounds were not sustainable. Okay, ten cent. Remind you, at the early this year is record high. It made the record high at seven hundred seventy-five Hong Kong dollar. Okay, now we are bearish on this one because you can see this rebound proved to be unsustainable. Okay, not a good sign. If it break below the immediate support 412, we will see it co uh, going to 355, 10 cent. Okay, I know you, you could be uh, interested in this one also. Alibaba, okay. Also, at the start of the year, it make a record high 307. Now what? 148, okay. This, this are updated price. I just updated this, uh, this chart um, this afternoon. Let's see what pattern we are seeing. Okay, we see a wave, lower waves, a wave, lower wave, and lower wave, okay? Now, also, this rebound, so-called rebound, is not sustainable, and the stock price has returned to the lower Bollinger Band. Okay, relative strength in the RSI, 30 something. It means no upward momentum at the moment. Or we can say it has downward momentum at the moment. So are you still going to buy on dip on these uh, tech stocks? Okay, May 1. Also, you see, also, okay. Not very impressive. We, we, we do not see very impressive uh, uh, pattern for these tech stocks. Okay, so after tech stocks, what then? We have Macau Casino stocks. Just one or two weeks ago, one or two weeks ago, and uh, authorities say they are going to um, put on stricter, stricter regulation on those. Uh, casinos operating in Macau. You know what? Those casinos in Macau, they are going to renew their license, their gaming license, their entertainment gambling license next year. Okay? If you do not listen, well, your license will be, will be in danger. <laughs> All right? So, since China Okay, since China is a uh, is a constituent stock in in the uh, Hansen Index, just on September September 15 maybe yeah the mid of September, one day, it dropped 32 percent. That is one third of your value gone gone in the wind. And year to day, it has dropped 52 percent. Okay, would you buy on the dip? <laughs> okay. Now, and then we have the China Evergrande. You should 
be, you should be hearing hearing this name repeatedly over and over again if you are in the market for the past uh, for the past week or two. Okay. It has uh, well, in fact, China Evergrande is the second largest largest uh, real estate property developer in China, and uh, unfortunately, it has uh, over 300 billion US dollar debt. Okay, it has uh, it has uh, well debt in all forms. In fact, uh, the point is the point is which one is holding the loan to which entities, banks, insurance company, or uh, uh, yeah, are holding the, the, the loans given to China Evergrande. Okay, we are seeing that it has difficulty in repaying all those debt. Okay, this is, uh, well, this is, we call it a contagion, contagion fear that it, it will, in, it will affect not just the China stock market, Hong Kong stock market, but also the uh, U.S. stock market. Just uh, just three days ago on Monday, the U.S. Drop, U.S. market dropped maybe two percent. Okay, just because the co contagion fear from China Evergrande. Well, let's see. You know what? This China Evergrande stock has been on our radar, our warning radar for years. I have been I have been watching these stocks for what, let's say five years. We have we repeatedly we have rumors about the financial situation of this uh, company. Uh, is uh, well, it has mountains of debt, but I don't know why uh, the uh, the the stock market just realized this realize this just uh, maybe a week or so before okay we have been uh, well keep keeping a distance from this stock and at the same time we monitoring this stock closely okay well um well uh if you if you uh, ask me uh what the chinese government <clears throat> can do to bail out this company to stop the contagion well, uh, I will raise my hand. I will say I don't know, because uh, there is one thing that not just one thing. Uh, there are many things that we are not clear about this company and about the financial situation of this company. Uh, how, in fact, how many stock, how many uh, debt? Uh, maybe over over three hundred billion or more or less, and uh, which entities? Uh, which major banks in Hong, in Hong Kong, major banks in China, or major bank in Europe, HSBC or, or uh, banks in US are holding the loans of China Evergrande? We don't know because uh, the transparency of the situation is very low. We just know that uh, a lot of creditors in China are, well, are protesting against uh, the company at the company's headquarters. Okay, so, but you know what? If a company has over 300 billion US dollar in debt, no one can bail it out except, except the Chinese government. But you know what? I, I, well, I just don't uh, know uh, when or what the Chinese government will do or whether the Chinese government will do to bail out or save this company or if, if the Chinese government will save this company at all. I don't know. So if I don't know and if or if you also you don't know, what would you do? You stay away from it. All right. Year to day, it has not 82% share price and look at the contagion contagion um, uh, influence of this uh, China Evergrande issue incident this is a long fall growth uh, and other mainland uh, 
Chinese mainland developer. Okay, this is a, a contagion. It means that if people, investors, fears about the situation, financial situation of China Evergrande, they will also fear the situation of other mainland real estate developer. This one, Longfa. Okay. Well, I, in fact, I am I'm, I'm not impressed. Well, uh, by by those uh, uh, rebound today. Okay, today uh, they rebound maybe ten nine percent. But uh, well, I'm not very impressed because uh, viewing the situation, viewing the fundamentals of those companies, I I will keep standing on the sideline at the moment. How about you? Now, not just uh, mainland real estate developers this is henderson land a hong kong local developer you see for the for should be on monday it dropped over 10 percent and now the share price is below well all the all those gain all those gain for the year for this year so far it's gone okay okay this is called we call it contagion fear okay this is a hong kong local real estate developer okay gone okay this uh 30.25 is the year end share price of last year okay so you see the far reaching of the incident this is a chinese bank means uh minson bank okay bank also get affected as I as I mentioned, and also insurance company Ping An year to day 44 percent, and and same same thing. I'm not very impressed by the by the today's funds. Okay, so you will ask me. Uh, we have uh, Chinese clamping down on technology stocks. We have uh, casino stock being hammered. And now we have real estate, bank, uh, and insurance companies that are affected by the Evergrande incident. So, any any good one, any good stocks you will suggest me? This one. Okay, China Man New, uh, Man New Diary. Okay, milk producer. Okay, diary reported in mainland. Okay, it seems to be posing quite good telecos. Okay, it's while the market, while the hand sand is tanking to the downside, it keeps striking out on the against the upper Bollinger band. And you can see we are come coming out from a downtrend in RSI 65, meaning upward momentum. Okay, you see on price, share price. The rising trend line remain very intact. Okay, two three one nine China menu. Okay, a dairy product producer. And the next one, we have Petro China. Uh, uh, as far as I know, oil price, oil price are doing well these days. It should help Petro China at the moment. Okay. You see, we have a cross here. This is good. This is 20 day moving average crossing above the 50 day one. Okay. And uh, some people will like to see the 50 day one crossing above the 200 day moving average. We call it a uh, uh, golden cross. Okay. But now this one sold you 20 above 50. Okay. So the overhead, the overhead is at 3.96. And the next upward target is as 4.21. Okay, nice this one. And uh, we have what we see Biologics also uh, uh, biotech biotech company. Okay, can you see that? It has crossed above a declining trend line, and at the same time we see that MACD is showing upward momentum. So I call it. A good setup, okay. A good setup. As long as the key support one at one hundred and ten is not violated, 
we, we, we should train up higher. Okay, so this is, uh, well, these are those uh, uh, Hong Kong store that are with good setup that I can take from those from those stocks, okay? And uh, most of them, as I shown you before, uh, most of them are done trending, okay, heavily. And uh, so if you have time, have a look at these Hong Kong stocks. And the last one uh, is a Singapore stock, Singtel, Singtel, okay? Uh, I know uh, uh, Singapore, stock market is also following uh, Hong Kong stocks and uh, US stocks for some consolidation. But uh, well, on technical, this stock, Singtel is, uh, well, outperforming, I can say. You see, after going through a period of consolidation, it emerged to the upside. Same, the MACD is showing good pattern. Okay, but mind you, Mind you, uh, this stock has been uh, well exceeding the upper Bollinger band for uh, for a while and, and for a while, and uh, it could come it could come for a, a mild consolidation, but uh, well, as long as as long as all these teleco parameters are in good shape, um, we see the short term should be good. Okay. Okay, so the, these are the stocks that I want to share with you today. And uh, well, I think uh, I've spent about 35 minutes and then maybe the coming five to 10 minutes, we can share some questions from the audience. Okay, thank uh, you, Ming. Um, yes, uh, Ming Hui, sorry, I forgot this one. Maybe I do a little bit conclusion first. Okay, and, sure. Uh, yeah, we are seeing a consolidation in U.S. stocks, and but at the same time, we are seeing non-stop stimulus and money printing, non-stop. So which are which are good for the asset market? Okay, I mean U.S. stock market. <laughs> Stop picking. Don't misunderstanding me. I mean U.S. stock market, not other market, not Hong Kong China stock market. For Hong Kong China stock market, I uh, still. I advise caution, caution. Okay, so spend more time on digging out some good stock with a good setup in the US market. All right, thank you. Ming Hui? Okay, thank you, Ming. We haven't received any questions from the audience. So if there's anything you'd like to share more about while we, uh, we can do so while we wait for the questions to roll in. Uh, yeah. Uh, one one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, I miss one thing on Tesla. Okay, uh, Tesla. You see, we have very good teleco, uh, as I showed you before. But uh, I, I have to mind you that Tesla is uh, is uh, related. Is uh, what can I say? There is a main key factor you have to, you have to uh, you have to think about is uh, China. It has a key uh, market, electric car market in China. So it, well, I can say China market is quite important to Tesla. And at the same time, it has a mega factory, uh, car producing factory in Shanghai. So uh, I will advise you just like what I did, just like what I do. If you are interested in this stock, also watch closely uh, the relationship between China and the US. Okay? Okay, Ming Hui. Okay, so our first question for the night is, which is the most volatile stock right now? Which is the most volatile? Volatile stock? Wow. Um, let me see. Let me see. Well, I uh, I would rather not say uh, what volatile stock. I would say first of all we have a look at the market, at the market first, and um, I, I I would say 
the U.S. market uh, is uh, quite uh, quite uh, dramatic. Well, remember two webinars ago, maybe in July, I talked about a consolidation in the U.S. stock market, five percent or eight percent in in the technology sector, eight percent back in July. But what happened? Uh, it happened that after coming out from the consolidation, the U.S. stock and uh, particularly those um, tech stock make record high. All three index, less than 100, Dow Jones and S&P 500 uh, are, making, are making record high. Okay, so I, I would say we are not um, looking at which one is most volatile. We have to say which one will be more secure. Okay, and if if I if I'm going to trade, if I'm going to trade, I will I will spot a market that is uh, that will let me make a mistake. Okay, that is if I'm caught within a consolidation or correction. Sometime I I will if I hold it, I, I will get back. I will get back to the upside. And which market? is providing you with such character the u.s market u.s stock market okay for the hong kong and china stock market well um you are right i was i will at the moment i will exercise extreme caution in fact i'm standing on the sideline for china and hong kong stocks okay and uh except those so with good setup that i showed you before and uh, because those market, China and Hong Kong markets are subject to big risk of uh, policy risk. Okay, you don't know, you never know overnight what new policy will come out and in the morning you will see your stocks hammered heavily. Okay, this is my point. Okay, the next question is when do you foresee China funds and stocks affected by the US-China situation um, will it will recover or will they ever recover? Um, well, I'm a very optimistic person. I look forward to uh, a very good relationship between US and China. But you know what? Before we see that, uh, the current situation, the current situation um, is not very uh, encouraging. As, I, as you can see, um, not just U.S. Look at look at the Asia Pacific region. Not just U.S. The U.K., uh, the Australia, Australia, and even India. They and also, you know what, Japan. They are they are forming an alliance. Okay, to uh, to uh, to check to check uh, China. So um, in the near future. Uh, I do not see, at the moment, I do not see any encouraging factors that have changed my view. I'm seeing that the US-China relationship, well, to be at this low point for quite a while. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, is there no inflation impact when the US continues to print money? Any view on interest rate hike and impact on stocks? Okay, good one. Um, you know what? Inflation, in fact, according to all those, uh, I, I, I do not just uh, watch the news from, from mainstream, mainstream news. I, I also get some of my information, my intelligence from all other sources. We know that inflation is on the rise. No doubt about that, no doubt. And, uh, but you know what? I do not think the Fed will raise interest rate, okay? Or they will raise one time and then wait for a long while and then do the second time. I don't think they 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 can raise interest rate at the moment or well next year or something. Look at the debt that uh, in fact, U.S. the U.S. government has uh, has uh, has. Uh, incur the debt 
for the during the pandemic, as I told you, there are number there are kindness programs, 1.9 trillion, 1.2 trillion, 3.5 trillion US dollars. They are they well they are just addicted. I can say they are just addicted to printing more money and giving more out for their people. And um, if if the Fed raise interest rate at the same time, the U.S. government has to pay more on interest rate that it borrow. Okay, so it, it is just uh, not working. Okay, so to me, I will look at the Federal Reserve not raising interest rate in the near future. Just let the party, just let the uh, asset bubble grow. Okay, so we are. So that's why I encourage people, investor, pick some stocks for good setup in the U.S. stock market. Okay, the next question is, there were news about the U.S. looking for alternative sources of rare earth metals and minerals other than China. So how do you see this impact on battery or related China stocks? Well, you know what? Um, I, I I do not believe in the in the in you you can hold a kind of wet uh rare uh, earth right you you're talking about rare earth uh, Ming right yes Ming yes, that's right. yeah yeah um you know technology technology is pushing forward the most uh unpredictable parameter of any future uh, is technology. And uh, I uh, I think uh, there are there will be points that we we do we do not rely too much on on those uh those material, and uh, I know that at the same time uh, Australia is also supplying to the U.S. So um you know what if 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 the U U.S. is going to acquire such substance from also from other sources you are, you 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 can you can quite sure you can quite sure that uh, those related chinese company will 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 be afraid okay losing customers okay so the at the same time uh, i think us should also have the national security concerns okay so um let's see let's see they are not stupid people. They are clever. They know where to buy or where to, or where to avoid, uh, where to uh, not use those uh, materials. I, I think mat uh, technology is a key point. The going forward technology, just like uh, why I like Tesla. It is a, a technology company that are encountering various fronts. Okay, the next question is, do you think the downtrend in Dow Jones and NASDAQ is over? Good question. In fact, I don't know. I don't predict. <clears throat> I just let, I just let, I just let the market tell me, okay? So at this point, uh, S&P 500, if we uh, break about 400, 4,480 return our wheel. But personally, I can say, uh, uh, I do not think the US stock market will start will start a prolonged downtrend. Okay, this is not a downtrend in the moment. You see, this is not a downtrend. It is just a consolidation, or you can see a correction. Okay, so the, um, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic, why? That's why you joined this uh, webinar. I spent I spent 30 minutes telling you the U.S. government, federal Federal Reserve, central bank are printing money, and all these are good for the asset market. Okay. Yep. Okay. The next question is: Do you use wave theory to try to read technicals? A oh, wave theory. Um. In fact, no. No, uh, I 
I try not to use very sophisticated uh, technique. Maybe some other, some of my friends will use it, but I personally, I, I won't. I use a uh, simple technical parameter indicators. Do you know what? The best, uh, according to a statistic from Bloomberg, the best, the best indicator, a technical indicator is what? Is moving average. Okay, if you if you use if you know how to use moving average, you are better off. You are better off. Okay, I uh, just like I do my uh, webinar. I will advise using simple and workable uh, parameter. For example, for momentum, I would like to use MACD, RSI, and of course, moving average are very key to my analysis. Okay, so wave, um, I, uh, you know what? I have um, 10, 10 friends using earlier waves or uh, what kind of cycle they are talking about. They have 10, 10 friends, they have 10 different kinds of how to counter waves. So, uh, well, maybe I'm not clever enough to follow. So I, I dropped that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. The next question is if you can show us the chart of Palantir. Uh, chart of Palantir, uh, is, it, is it also in your um, MT5? Uh, I don't um, think so. It is a, quite a new stock, Minghui. Yeah. Right. Do you have that one, Palantir? I am checking right now. It is a new stock. I think um, it is uh, it is holding by uh, Arc Investment, right? Kathy Wood. <laughs> oh, we do have it. We have it on MT5, yes. Oh, which one? Uh, in in uh, NYSE or yeah. let's start one? NYSE. NYSE? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one. Okay, good. Let me talk about it. Okay, let me open it. I know this is, uh, it is a stock uh, monitored by those who like the test sector. Oh, where is it? I add this, right? Hmm. Minghui, I don't know why I cannot show this on this one. And uh, let me try again. Uh, Minghui, is it this one? But uh, I, I should press OK, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Can I open it directly? Um, if not, it's okay. We can move on to the next question. We will address this um, via email instead. Uh, okay, agree. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. All right. So the next question is, what do you think about the semicon industry in China? Semi, what? Semiconductor, right? Yes. Um, ah, it's the same old question. I, I have received this question uh, numerous times, a lot of time. Um, you know, the biggest, um, the biggest uh, semiconductor company in China is SMIC. SMIC, uh, the biggest one 
has been uh, has been backlisted in the U.S. Okay, and um, it it depends on how you see the tech world. Well, if you if you say uh, China is uh, has the biggest has the most advanced technology in a in the test sector and the semiconductor uh, sector. Well, you can look into that one, but uh, you know what? This uh, the biggest semiconductor producer in China has been banned, has been uh, well backlisted in U.S. in the U.S. and uh, it will cause the trouble. And uh, I mean stock rise, I mean stock price. Okay, if your 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 stock is backlisted in the U.S., the the index cannot get you included in the index and those big financial institution they cannot buy the stock so the upside uh, could be limited okay so i um i i always say uh they have a, you have a good counterpart in the us just like lavidia and brockham just i mentioned before they are they are big us stocks why why don't you think about them Okay, so uh, I think I planned, uh, I have got this one, uh, Ming, uh, should we show, uh, show this one? Yep, yep, sure. Okay. Webinar. Okay, this stock has a short history, I think. Have a look. Wow, you see the, um, the MAPD, just like the pattern I like. Okay, it's coming back up to zero, the MACD. And the relative strength index, not bad, uh, 52, uh, not showing downside momentum. And the stock price is above both 20 and 50 day moving average. Yeah, uh, I, will, I, will, I will look at this stock with a bullish view. Ming? Okay. Foolish. Okay, sure. All right. For the next question, um, someone is asking what you think of the SoFi FinTech US stock. Sorry, uh, can you repeat? SoFi? SoFi, uh, S-O-F-I. S-O-F-I, SoFi. Uh, US stock, right? Uh, do you have it on the CFD? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think we have it on MT5. Oh, yeah, we, mm. yes, we do. Yes, we do. It's on NASDAQ. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's that one. Is it to, so far chat? Yes. Ah, I got it. So far, why why every time I try to add it, it, it cannot be added. So far, this one. So simple. Uh, yeah, I got it. Should be this one. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm going to show it. Uh, trap window. Wow, it seems a little bit stressed. Okay, webinar. Mm, okay, so uh, good question. You see, uh, this one is a little bit stressed on upside momentum. And the, in fact, the upside momentum is uh, peaking. I can say it is peaking. And the RSI is above over, over board. 70, we call it overboard. Okay, if it turned down, if it turned down, that will not be good. And as I can say, and as I mentioned before, it is uh, it is uh, playing around. It has exceeded the upper Bollinger Band, and uh, it stands a good chance of uh, of consolidating to the downside. But the good point is, uh, twenty day is rising above the fifty day. So what I would do, I would uh, I would not buy at this price. Okay. Well, check the fund fundamental of this stock. If this is good one. This one is good. I will well. I will wait 
I will wait for it, do a little bit consolidation before buying. Okay, I will not trace the price at this moment. A little bit, I can say it is a little bit stressed. Okay. Okay, so for the second last question of tonight, uh, someone is asking how is the Singapore set, SATS? SETS, oh, okay. So SETS, SATS. Oh, sorry, it's a stock, right? SATS. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah, I remember. I think I can find here. Can I? Do you have this stock? Yes, it's on SGX. Okay. Yeah, this one got you. Okay. Okay, good. And template, we have a webinar template. Mm, okay, ah, same as the stock I just uh, mentioned. Okay, so the, um, uh, no, this one is good. Okay, so um, you see, the uh, MACD is good. RSI is good. So um, let's see, I, I would say, well, um, I, will, I, will, I will take a look at this stock with a bullish view, okay? I think uh, if it cross above this period, this two, can you see two, one, two, period high, about uh, 420, 4.20. If it break about this one, it will have it will has a long up leg, okay. So the overhead resistance we are we are watching the overhead resistance at uh, four twenty, and uh, yeah, not bad this one. Ming. Okay. Yep. So due to time constraint, we will pick one last question, and that is asking. Um, uh, that saying you've mentioned many times about stock picking. Do you think thematic ETFs are better than main index ETFs? Oh, sorry, uh, can you repeat the, what ETF against what thematic. ETF? Thematic against main index. Kinetic ETF? Thematic themes. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear very well. Uh, like different themes of ETMs. E-H-E-M-A-T-I-C. Uh, BIM, BIM ETF. Yeah. BIM ETF and what ETF? Mainstream? Main index. Main index ETF. Uh, BIM mm -hmm. ETF. Sorry, I I, uh, I know what, what do you mean by index ETF, but uh, BIM ETF, I sorry, I have no knowledge of this one at the moment. Maybe you can educate me on this one. <laughs> BIM ETF, sorry. Yeah, Ming, sorry, uh, BIM, I have no knowledge of BIM ETF at the moment. All right, then shall we skip this question then? Uh, okay, maybe maybe ask this uh, audience member to write to me uh, well, in a follow-up uh, email, so that let me check and see if I can right. help. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yep, so we have to conclude the webinar session now because um, it, uh, due to time constraint. Okay, thank yep, you very so, much. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you for that, Ming. We have received an overwhelming number of questions tonight and the, for the questions that we couldn't get to, we will respond to them via email. Yep, and this was a very insightful session. So thank you, Ming, as well as Dominica. And thank you very much, everybody, for your time tuning into this webinar tonight. We'll be sending everyone a link to today's webinar recording so you can watch it again if you'd like to. That's all for today. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.